This is Powering the Movement, a global citizen podcast, and I'm Madge Thomas. This is the podcast for a movement of engaged citizens around the world who are committed to ending extreme poverty by 2030. During an extreme weather event, Petra Benchana maps out tweets that contain information about a natural disaster such as a flood. They then work with government agencies to verify these tweets in real time. This information can be life-saving to residents during a flood. Jakarta historically has predictable rainy monsoon seasons. During this time, flooding's to be expected, but increasingly, these weather events are erratic and unpredictable. This is for a few reasons. Jakarta is a rapidly urbanising megacity with a total population of over 10 million people. Because of urbanization, because of all these competing infrastructural interventions in the city, and because of all the overlaid infrastructure, there is no way to predict why the flood is happening, where the water is going to come from, and how it's going to be distributed. This rapid development has helped Jakarta earn another title. This megacity is also the fastest sinking city in the world. The north edge of the city is actually six feet under sea level. So water from the city's 13 rivers is pumped into the ocean. And what's important to understand about that, it means that if at any point any of that infrastructure fails, if a pump breaks, if a canal wall breaks, all of that water is released back into the city. And to boot, it's seated on the Ring of Fire, a major area in the basin of the Pacific Ocean that houses over 450 volcanoes and is responsible for more than 80% of the world's biggest earthquakes. Jakarta is situated on the coastal edge of the world's most disaster-prone region. Indonesia sits on the Ring of Fire, which makes it uh, have a very high exposure to hazards. Climate change only intensifies all of this. This has been part of daily life, but what we're seeing now with climate change is that the monsoon isn't happening the way it used to, and it's becoming increasingly erratic. We are seeing an increase with climate change, a lot more disaster events occurring that are unpredictable in Jakarta. And so these kinds of things, nothing can predict. No modeling can predict this. No matter how much computation you have, nothing can predict this event. And this is increasingly what we're seeing happening because when the rain comes, it's not coming in a greater volume, but it's coming in a greater intensity. And so we have these infrastructure failures that we cannot predict. And that's what's causing a lot of the disaster events in recent years. Nasheen's background as an architectural researcher and designer helped her to notice a few key things about Jakarta's increasingly unpredictable weather events. Patham and Chana actually started as an applied research project and it was previously called patajakarta.org. And it was started by two co-founders, uh, Dr. Etienne Turpin and Dr. Thomas Holderness. And it really arose out of a series of observations about the city. One, that, you know, flooding was becoming increasingly unpredictable. The other important observation was that residents were tweeting about flooding at an incredible frequency. So even when like they were in like waist-high flood waters or they were on their motorbikes and the flood was already up to their wheel, they were still tweeting about flooding. They love to tweet and post on social media. And actually, this is something I think very special about Jakarta, we can say, is the maybe addiction to social media. Jakarta is actually the Twitter capital of the world. We produce 2% of the world's tweets annually. So, during extreme weather events, people would tweet their location and sometimes snap a picture of the flooding they were experiencing. She found inspiration in this spontaneous collaboration. And we were very encouraged by the Indonesian spirit of Gotong Royong, which means mutual aid. And, you know, this is a spirit that thrives in Indonesia where there is no shortage of help. When anyone needs help, everyone comes together to help them. And so we thought that why not use this sort of addiction to social media to make Gotong Royong digital? Why not repurpose social media towards more productive ends? Because people are already using it to inform each other. Why not put it in a more cohesive and comprehensive way so that everyone in the city can benefit from this type of information sharing? I think what's really amazing is that when the flood happens, when an earthquake happens even, within minutes, people are making memes about it. And so like during a disaster, it's really important that there is that spirit, there is that uh, liveliness to encourage people to come together. And I think that's something that's very much in the spirit here is that they want to come together, they make jokes about it because that's what you have to do. 
The Petabenchana map collects the information crowdsourced from social media. Then, it works with ground staff from Indonesia's National Emergency Management Agency to verify the information that's coming in. During a weather event, someone can tag Petabenchana or mention keywords around flooding. Then, the service will automatically respond to them, asking if they want to submit a flood report to contribute to the community flood map. Here's what their HQ sounds like during an example extreme weather event. So we're at the Jakarta Emergency Management Agency and Ba'arin, who works here, has just explained to us that they're seeing the resident reports coming in in real time on the map and they're monitoring this to understand how high the flood is in certain areas and what our resident needs. Um, when they view incoming resident reports, they, um, they are looking at it to understand what the situation is on the ground, but then they are confirming with their underground staff to see what is the flood height, and then once they confirm that, they uh, input the government verified information on the map. And this way they're sharing back information with residents that yes, we verified this neighborhood is this high. And once they do that, they also uh, coordinate with their response teams who can um, understand which are the areas that need um, the response most urgently and what are the types of response each uh, neighborhood needs. And after that, they're coordinating with their teams to send their response teams to the areas that need it most. When the ground staff verifies the information from social media, response teams can activate and save those who are in danger and affected by the flooding. This mapping system is crucial as response teams decide where to allocate their resources in real time and also in the future. And so in addition to the real-time information sharing that's happening, this type of information is useful also for further analysis to understand um, which neighbourhoods are most affected and um, which should be the priority areas, um, which um, really would be helpful in further planning and response. And that's important because climate change is not just a scientific issue. The way that communities and political institutions respond to climate change also raises questions of social justice. This easily accessible map democratises information for community response. With our organisation, we're really hoping to primarily, you know, democratise decision support tools to make sure that everyone has access to the same information freely so that they can make decisions about safety and response. They can feel like, OK, even though you can't prevent the flood, at least you can do something in that situation in order to minimise your risk and to minimise your loss. And reports this year have shown that, of course, climate change affects people to different extents and risk is uneven across the city. And so I think we have to address a form of climate change that's more democratised, that can give everyone equal access to what they need in order to make timely decisions and to prevent further loss from happening because we see that it's those populations that are most vulnerable that are experiencing the greatest losses and so how do we prevent that cycle from occurring how do we empower those groups or also to participate in the decisions that are being made in the city and how do we grant eligibility to all of the diverse groups of people that are living in the city Peta Benchana wants to bring democratic information sharing across Indonesia and incorporate more people, more voices, into the project. That's what Nasheen says she plans to do if she's awarded the Global Citizen Cisco Youth Leadership Award, for which she's a finalist. If she wins, Nasheen would receive $250,000. If we were awarded the prize, I think this would be the goal, is to develop the offline reporting mechanisms, because... I think as we scale nationally, it's incredibly important to make sure that the reach also scales at that same granularity. And right now we're in discussions with groups about how can we incorporate things like SMS and radio in order to make sure that even in areas where the connectivity to social media isn't as high, there are still ways to contribute to crowdsourced reporting in a way that's useful for everybody. Especially now we're also expanding to other hazards. and so. We're expanding to uh, not only flooding, but earthquakes, uh, volcanoes, forest fires, haze. And so with these disasters, especially with earthquakes, we see that the power gets cut. And so I think it's incredibly important that we address this issue of how are we going to modify the platform and the software so that it is able to respond to these conditions if the power is cut and to make sure that that information is still available and that an information vacuum doesn't form. 
you cannot prevent the disaster from happening and when it happens you take it in as a light-hearted way as you can you try and help each other and you focus on the help instead of the really disastrous impacts and i think that helps people recover much faster it helps with um you know the psychological and the emotional as well as the economic impacts if everyone is able to have the sort of attitude and be like okay we're going to focus on how can we help each other the winner of the Cisco Youth Leadership Award is being announced this month, so you can head to our website, globalcitizen.org, to find out if Peta Benchana won. While you're there, check out stories about other changemakers like Nasheen. To learn more about Peta Benchana, you can find links to their website in our show notes. And you can start taking action to support climate and environment efforts today in the Global Citizen app. If you want to share Nasheen's story... Please send this episode to a friend or help others find this podcast by rating and reviewing Powering the Movement wherever you're listening. It really helps the cause. I'm your host, Madge Thomas. Powering the Movement, a Global Citizen podcast, is a co-production of Global Citizen and Kindred Media. Danielle Roth produced this episode and it was scored and mixed by Brad Stratton. Sandy Smolens is our executive producer. Chris Peterson is the executive producer for Kindred Media. Cassie Carruthers is the Editor-in-Chief for Global Citizen. Special thanks to George Arif, Chantal Simpson and Matt Petronzio.